All right, well, we ended the last lesson uh, talking about functions, and in this lesson, we're going to take a look at a type of function called a sequence. And a sequence is just an ordered list of numbers. And since a sequence is a function, it has a domain and a range. And the domain of a sequence is just a set of natural numbers. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Well, the range is uh, all the terms that are in the sequence. So the first term might be 2, and the second term might be 4, and the third term might be 6. A sequence can be finite, meaning you can count the number of terms within that sequence, or it can be infinite, meaning you can't count the number of terms within the sequence. Okay, so if we use the letter U to represent the sequence 2, 4, 6, 8, and so on. So here's sequence U, and we're going to say that the sequence is 2, 4, 6, 8, and so on. Okay, then the first number in that sequence we call U sub 1. So U sub 1 would be 2. The second term in the sequence, U sub 2, that's 4. The third term in the sequence, U sub 3, that's 6. And the fourth term in the sequence, U sub 4, that's 8. Now, that sequence goes on forever, so there's an infinite number of terms. The nth term, the nth term, we call U sub n. Now this sequence can be called u, sometimes the sequence might be just referred to as u sub n. So both u and u sub n can be used uh, to refer to a sequence. And it may not even be u, it may be a, it could be anything. But in this example we're using u to name the sequence. Now because a sequence is a function, that means a sequence can also be graphed on a Cartesian coordinate plane. So in this case, uh, our x-axis is now our domain, that set of natural numbers, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on. In our range, which is our y-axis, that just becomes the numbers in the sequence. So if our sequence is 2, 4, 6, 8, all that means is if we're going to graph this sequence, we're going to graph the points, the first term, which is 2, the second term, which is 4. The third term, which is 6. The fourth term, which is 8. So the graph of a sequence is really just a scatter plot, because we're graphing discrete points, the point 1, 2, and the point 2, 3. Oops. 2, 4. And the point 3, 6. And the point 4, 8. Okay, and so on. So when you have a sequence, one thing you want to do is to see if it actually follows a pattern. Because if it does, then we can probably write a formula uh, to represent that pattern to find uh, terms that are further down the sequence. So in our example, we said that our sequence was uh, 2, 4, 6, 8, and so on. Okay, so that means u sub 1 is 2. And u sub 2 is 4, u sub 3 is 6, and u sub 4 is 8. Now, what is u sub n? Well, notice every term is just two more than the last one. So if we're looking for u sub n, the term that comes before u sub n is u sub n minus 1. So every term is two more than the preceding one. So the u sub n is u sub n minus 1 plus 2. Now this is the recursive form of that sequence, and this works when only if n is greater than or equal to 2. Remember, n represents uh, the, basically the position of the term, so as long as it's the second term or more, then the term will always be 2 more than the one that came before it. A recursive formula is a formula used to identify the next term in, the, in a sequence based on a preceding term. The idea of being a recursive formula is always based on a preceding value, and that's what we call u sub n minus 1, and then we also have to have a, a starting value. Okay, so in this example, our starting value is going to be negative 4. Okay, so that means a sub 1 is negative 4, and our recursive formula is going to be a sub n 
That means any term in the sequence is equal to a sub n minus 1, the preceding term, plus 5. Okay, so uh, we're going to find the first four terms of the sequence. So the first term is negative 4, and so we're going to look for a sub 2. a sub 2 is going to be a sub 2 minus 1, the preceding term, plus 5. Well, the preceding term was negative 4. Uh, negative 4 plus 5 will give us 1. Okay, so the second term in the sequence is 1. Now, the third term, a sub 3, well, that's going to be the preceding term, a sub 3 minus 1, which is 1, plus 5. Okay, 1 plus 5 is 6. And finally, the fourth term, uh, a sub 4, is going to be the preceding term, a sub 4 minus 1, plus 5. The preceding term was 6, add the 5, and now we get 11. So the first four terms of this sequence are negative 4, 1, 6, and 11. All right, so next we're going to take a look at how to enter in this recursive formula to the TI-84. Turn your, your TI-84 on. we got to go to mode and change it from function mode to sequence mode. So just move it down over to sequence and hit enter. Okay, now we can go up to y equals. And here you can see that instead of y equals mx plus b, we've got our sequence here. And so we're saying our minimum uh, is going to be the first term. u sub n is where we enter in our recursive formula. And notice here they're using u. We used a, doesn't matter. So on the calculator to get to our a u, we're going to hit second 7. So that we're using a u instead of the a. So u parenthesis n minus 1. The n is this x key n minus 1, close parentheses, plus 5. Okay, now we need to go down 1 and say that uh, our first term is going to be negative 4. And that's it. We have a recursive form uh, formula that's starting at the first term, which is negative 4. Second table, and there's your sequence. So the first term is negative 4, the second is 1, and then so on, 6, 11, 16, 21. Notice, if you go before the first term, there's no numbers in the sequence. Okay, so sometimes we want to start numbering the terms with an index other than 1, uh, such as 0. So then our first term is actually a sub 0, and we call that the 0th term. So that would be the first term in the sequence, and the second term in the sequence would actually be a sub 1. So let's take a look at an example. Uh, suppose a ball is dropped from a height of 9 feet. It hits the ground and bounces to a height of 6 feet. It continues to bounce, and on each rebound, it rises to two-thirds of the height of the previous bounce. Okay, so what we want to do is try to write a recursive formula to match this situation, and then we'll f use that, uh, we'll enter that into the calculator and find the height of the ball after the fourth bounce. Okay, um, well, since the initial height is nine feet, uh, we're going to use a sub zero. Okay, so this is the height before any bouncing takes place. So a sub 0 is 9 feet. After the first bounce, a sub 1 is 6 feet. Um, and then each successive bounce is 2 thirds the height of the previous bounce. So if we're going to write a formula, then that means a sub n. Well, every term is 2 thirds the height of the preceding term. So 2 thirds a sub n minus 1. Okay, and then this formula is true for all values of n that are greater than or equal to 1. Okay, so let's enter this into our calculator and we'll find the height of the ball after the fourth bounce. Okay, so make sure your calculator is on. We need to go to, you should be in sequence mode. Okay, go up to y equals. In this case, uh, we're going to use the zeroth term, so we're going to go up here and hit zero. And then down for a formula, we're going to say that u sub n is two thirds, so two divided by three times uh, u sub n minus one. So we'll just put that in parentheses and we'll say 
u sub n minus 1. Close the parentheses for each one. Our starting value is going to be 9 feet. And we're starting in there at the zeroth term. So now we can go to our table, second graph. And you can see that uh, our initial height was 9 feet. After the first bounce, it's 6 feet, and then 4 feet. Uh, and then finally, at the fourth bounce, we're about 1.7 feet. Okay, let's take a look at another application using sequences. Uh, suppose your starting salary for a job is $20,000 and you earn a raise of $2,000 at the end of each year of work. So the question is, what will your salary be at the end of the sixth year? So what we're going to do is we're going to write a recursive function to represent this problem, and then we're actually going to enter that into our calculator to find the, uh, the amount after the sixth year. So remember, recursion simply means defining something based on what came before it. So in this case, our initial term is going to be 20,000. So that's going to be our u sub 0. u sub 0 is 20,000. u sub 1 is going to be 2,000 more than the initial value. So u sub 1 is going to be 22,000. And now we want to write a recursive function for u sub n. And u sub n, that means any term in the sequence is 2,000 more than the one that came before it. And remember to write the one that came before it before it, we write uh, u sub n minus 1, in this case plus 2,000. All right, so let's enter that into our calculator. Uh, make sure your calculator is on. And right now I'm already in sequence mode in y equals. So over here we're going to say our minimum is going to be the zero term. Right here where it says u sub n or u of n, we're going to write our function. So we're going to have second 7 parentheses n minus 1 plus 2,000. And that's our recursive function. Go down one more and we have to enter in our minimum. So basically our starting value. We're starting at 20,000. All right, that's it. Just go to second graph to see our table. And we'll go up to the sixth year. And you can see... Uh, when n is 6, the 6th term in the sequence will be at $32,000. Alright, so if you remember from geometry, a chord is just a segment that connects two points on a circle. Uh, suppose we were to keep drawing random chords inside a circle. Each time that would create uh, more and more sectioned off areas. So the question is, uh, if we were to go up to 20 chords, how many different regions would there be? Well, let's start by writing a recursive formula, and then we'll enter that into our calculator to find out uh, the number of regions after 20 chords. Well, if we let the first chord be our initial value, okay, well, the first chord creates two regions. Okay? So what that means is, we'll say u sub 1 is 2. Okay, uh, second chord, second term in the sequence gives you four regions, so u sub 2 will give us four, u sub 3 is seven, and u sub 4 is 11. Okay, well, what is this going to look like when we get up to 20 chords? There'd be quite a bit, uh, quite a few regions there, it'd be hard to count, so this formula is really going to help us out. So let's just write this out here and see if we can see what's happening here. Uh, if we have one chord, notice u sub 1 is 2. Okay, when we have two chords, we say that u sub 2 is 4. Well, 4 is just 2 more than the previous value. So 4 is actually uh, u sub 1 plus 2. Okay, if we get to our third uh, term in our sequence, u sub 3. Well, that is just seven regions. Okay, well, seven regions is three more than our previous term, and our previous term was u sub 2, so this is u sub 2 plus 3. In our fourth term, we have 11 regions, so u sub 4. Well, that's going to be um, 
seven more than our previous term. So it's u sub three plus four. Okay, so our, what we really want to find out is for n number of chords, uh, how many regions will there be? Okay, so u sub n. Well, notice um, u sub n will always be the preceding term plus that number. So u sub 4, we added 4. u sub 3, we added 3 Okay, to the previous term. So remember, the previous term to u sub n is u sub n minus 1 plus n. Okay, so now that we have a recursive function, enter this into your calculator to determine the number of regions after drawing 20 chords. Let's take a look at that. Okay, so make sure your calculator is on. Uh, we'll go to y equals, we'll clear the last problem. Okay, so in this case, we're going to start at 1. u sub n, what we just said is second 7, that gives us our u, parentheses, n minus 1, plus n. Okay, and we're starting at 2. Okay, so let's go up here to our table, second graph. Um, you can see, you can just go down, you can type in 20, we'll just keep clicking. So when we have 20 chords, we're going to have 211 uh, separate regions. For our last example, we'll look at how a recursive formula can be used to determine how much chlorine is in a pool. So suppose your pool started with 3.4 gallons of chlorine, and each day you add a quarter gallon. But each day, 15% of that chlorine evaporates. So the question is, how much chlorine will be in the pool at the end of the sixth day? Well, let's just start by writing down some of our known information, starting with the initial amount of chlorine, which is 3.4 gallons. So U sub 0 will be 3.4. Now, since 15% of that chlorine evaporates, you got to think what percentage of that chlorine is left at the end of each day. Well, 15% is gone. 85% of that mixture would re then remain. So at the end of any given day, you have 85% of that initial amount from the day before plus that uh, quarter gallon that was added. So our recursive function, u sub n, well, that's going to be for any amount of chlorine for on any day, we're going to have 85% of the amount that we had the day before u sub n minus 1 plus that quarter gallon. Okay, and this is true for all values of n greater than or equal to 1. Now let's enter this into the calculator and find out how much chlorine is left after the sixth day. Okay, so go ahead, take out your calculator, turn it on, make sure the mode is in sequence, and then we'll go up to y equals. And we already have a, a minimum of 0, so we're starting with our 0th term. Our function is going to be 0.85 times u sub n minus 1 plus 0.25. So we're going to do second 7, parentheses, n minus 1, close parentheses, plus 0.25, close the second set of parentheses. And we're starting with our initial value of 3.4, so 3.4 gallons. All right, go ahead and hit your second graph to look at our table and at the end of the sixth day we should have about 2.1647 gallons of chlorine.